נפש יהודי תהומיה, מעטה מזרע קדימו, איל ציון תהומיה. או לא עבדו תקווה שינו, התקווה בשנת אלפיים להיות שם The words mean in the Jewish heart a Jewish spirit still sings and the eyes look east towards Zion. Our hope is not lost our hope of 2,000 years, to be free nation in our land, in the land of Zion, in Yerushalayim. You know, the word Hatikva, the word Tikva means hope. The, uh, the song was written, interesting enough, in the 1880s by a man called Naftali Hertz uh, Imber. He was a uh, Galicia Jew. And after he wrote it, then it was put to music. It really was not officially made the national anthem of Israel until the year 2004 when it was voted on by the Knesset. Now, Hatikva is the underlying hope of the Jewish people throughout the long years of the Galut, of the exile, that they would someday return to an independent land of their own. You know, in the year 70 CE, it was Titus, who was a Roman general, who destroyed the temple and Jerusalem. And he carried most of the Jews away and they were scattered throughout the Roman Empire. During the long and oppressive years of the exile, again, the Jews did not uh, give up any hope that one day they would rebuild Jerusalem, uh, Israel and the temple. They said, a, they said a special prayer for the return again of the exile and also celebrated all the holidays connection with Israel no place else this is what dictates when we when the holidays happen and what on the seasons that are in Israel in addition it says that in Israel that we uh, turn our eyes again all in our hearts we pray we always we always pray towards the Jerusalem uh, but everywhere in the world, that's the direction. Again, we pray toward the east because Jerusalem is towards the east. And that's the, the first verse, again, talks about the hope that has never died. The second stanza of the Hatikva recalls the underlying hope of Jews throughout the generations. Again, Jews who lived in other countries and Jews have remained again in Palestine. When Hatikva is sung together, we are making a promise that we will never forget the underlying Jewish hope of independence and that we will with be do everything in our power, again, to help the state of Israel to survive and to prosper. You know, it's interesting, it's called Sion de Yushalayim. I, I don't care whether you're religious or not. Sion stands for a Zionist, again, a secular Jew. And Yushalayim, again, thinks for, stands for a religious Jew. They're all the same. Whether you're religious or not, again, they all love the state. You know, it's interesting. I saw an interview with Jerry Steinfeld. And when they talked about Israel, he choked up. He had to pause for a moment to get himself together again. I've been fortunate enough to travel many places throughout the world. And every time the plan, plane lands, there's a certain excitement of being in a new place and seeing new things and wondering what it's going to be like. Every place but when I landed in Israel. First time I went to Israel was in 1985. And when the plane landed, as the, as the wheels landed onto the tarmac, tears were streaming down my eyes. I was home. It's amazing. It's not a land. It's part of who we are. When we landed then in 85, it was kind of cute. Um, we lost our luggage. 
And it just so happened that my cousin was marrying her off her daughter. So we were invited to an Israeli wedding. And normally, I mean, if I go to a wedding, I'm going to wear a suit and a tie. The problem was my suit and tie were in my luggage that I didn't have. So I went to the wedding kind of embarrassed. I was only wearing a pair of pants and a white shirt. And my embarrassment ended very quickly when I got there because so was everybody else wearing a white shirt. <laughs> Israelis are very uh, laid back when it comes to affairs. But the reason I'm mentioning the story is that at the end of the wedding, everyone stood up and they sang the song. I had never heard it sung before. Oh, I heard the words and I heard the tune, but I never heard Israeli singing it. What a difference. What a difference. It's amazing. God should bless the state of Israel and protect all of its people. Thank you for listening. Again, Shavuos is this week. We need to pray to God that it's time to liberate Israel and the world up with only happiness. Again, please, well, again, there'll be no class next week. Please subscribe, push the like button, and please share with your friends. God bless and be well. Mm -hmm.